OpenAI wins a shock gold at the International Math Olympiad as rumors swirl that we are on the verge of GPT-5. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. There is definitely a sense in the air that we are on a precipice. It's coming from semi-whispered tweets like this one from former Stability founder Ahmad Mustak, who writes, Yes, the acceleration timelines aren't fast enough from some stuff I've seen recently, not from unreleased AI models. A phase shift is coming very soon, and I hope we will make it okay to the other side. Sad face emoji. And then in a follow-up, he writes, sorry for vague post. This is far from the only example of something like this that I've seen recently. Another piece of this sensibility is the growing enormity of the deals being thrown around for top talent. On Twitter, for example, people are hearing about billion dollars or billion point two five offers for four years of work. And people responded fiercely that there must be some IP included with that. But even if those numbers aren't exactly accurate, they seem directionally correct. So this is all the background noise for news that we got at the end of last week, that OpenAI's most recent experimental reasoning model had actually won gold at the International Math Olympiad, or IMO. Now, the IMO is a high school math competition, but it's one of the world's most difficult and prestigious, and its participants have gone on to be some of the most decorated mathematicians of their generation. The contest involves high-level theoretical math problems that require formal proofs rather than numerical answers. The model was given the same constraints as human contestants. Four and a half hour exam sessions, no tools or internet access. Now, this was, of course, a test. It was not OpenAI actually competing. But still, Alexander Way, a reasoning engineer at OpenAI, writes, Why is this a big deal? First, international math Olympiad problems demand a new level of sustained creative thinking compared to past benchmarks. In reasoning time horizon, we've now progressed from GSM 8K, around 0.1 minutes for top humans, to the math benchmark, around one minute, to AIME, around 10 minutes, to the International Math Olympiad, which takes around 100 minutes. Second, IMO submissions are very hard to verify multi-page proofs. Progress here calls for going beyond the RL paradigm of clear-cut, verifiable rewards. By doing so, we've obtained a model that can craft intricate, watertight arguments at the level of human mathematicians. Besides the result itself, he continues, I'm excited about our approach. We reach this capability level not via narrow task-specific methodology, but by breaking new ground in general-purpose reinforcement learning and test time compute scaling. Now, to get specific about the performance, the model solved five of six questions and was independently verified by former IMO medalists, which would again place it performing well enough for gold. And to reinforce what's different about this performance as compared to the ArcAGI test that O3 ran late last year, the result was achieved completely without tools like a Python execution environment or a web browser. Everything the model knows about math was learned in pre-training or during the reinforcement learning process. Now, for people who have been watching the benchmarks on a level that's more about just advertising your latest model, the IMO gold medal has been one of the achievements that could mark a significant advancement. In fact, this benchmark is something that people have opined on since at least 2022, and that basically no one thought would arrive this soon. Nat McAleese wrote, We're seeing much faster AI progress than Paul Cristiano and Eliezer Yudkowsky predicted, who had gold in 2025 at 8% and 16% respectively by methods that are more general than expected. Now, those predictions were made in February 2022 and presumed the use of tools. And while someone pointed out that Yudkowsky actually had it at at least 16% because it was in the context of a bet with Cristiano, the point still remains that they had it fairly low. Now, what's relevant about these two guys is that they've been mainstays of the AI safety world for decades, frequently warning of fast takeoff, meaning that they're inclined to think that things are going to happen quickly. Terence Tao, the youngest person to ever participate in the IMO at the age of 10, and one of the greatest living mathematicians, also didn't see this coming. Last month in an appearance on the Lex Friedman podcast, Tao predicted that AI wouldn't score very highly on the IMO tasks and should start with a contest where the solution isn't a long-form proof. Even professional AI skeptic Gary Marcus was impressed when he learned that the model didn't have access to external tools. Now, over the weekend, OpenAI staff chimed in on why the results matter so much. Jerry Torek wrote, Why I'm excited about the IMO results we just published, we did very little IMO-specific work. We just kept training general models. All natural language proofs, no evaluation harness. We needed a new research breakthrough, and Alex Way and team delivered. Researcher Noam Brown unpacked the technical details a little more, writing, Typically for these AI results, like in Go, Dota, Poker, Diplomacy, researchers spend years making an AI that masters one narrow domain and does little else. But this isn't an IMO-specific model. It's a reasoning LLM that incorporates new experimental general-purpose techniques. So what's different? We developed new techniques that make LLMs a lot better at hard-to-verify tasks. IMO problems were the perfect challenge for this. Proofs are pages long and take experts hours to grade. 
Compare that to AIME, where answers are simply an integer from 0 to 999. Also, this model thinks for a long time. A1 thought for seconds, deep research for minutes. This one thinks for hours. Importantly, it's also more efficient with its thinking, and there's a lot of room to push the test time compute and efficiency further. He also discussed the acceleration, commenting, It's worth reflecting on just how fast AI progress has been, especially in math. In 2024, AI labs were using grade school math, GSM-8K, as an eval in their model releases. Since then, we've saturated the high school math benchmark, then AIME, and are now at IMO Gold. Where does this go? As fast as recent AI progress has been, I fully expect the trend to continue. Importantly, I think we're close to AI substantially contributing to scientific discovery. There's a big difference between AI slightly below top human performance versus slightly above. Now, this is obviously something that Sam Altman talks about all the time, that he thinks 2026 is the year that we start to get actual scientific advancement from AI, which would be a fundamentally different place than we are now. Now, of course, all of this really begs the question of where we are on the journey towards AGI, or however we want to describe the next clear phase in AI's existence. This kind of generalized reasoning seems like a big unlock. Until now, reinforcement learning training required very clear, verifiable results. Now, you can extend that concept a little to more subjective tasks like writing, but a person still needs to be able to decide if a response is correct or incorrect. Whatever the OpenAI research team pulled off sounds like it used a different method of training that generalizes far better. Imam Mustak again wrote, This was a year earlier than I expected. Anon, are you still smarter than this stochastic parrot? Being able to infer for hours is one of those takeoff unlocks. He continued, AGI is already here. All the components exist, we just need to stitch them together. It's artificial general intelligence, not artificial top percentile human intelligence. Two years ago, who would have said an IMO gold medal in topping benchmarks isn't AGI? Will Brown, a reinforcement learning specialist at Prime Intellect, posted, I'm much more inclined to say that the RL system inside OpenAI is AGI rather than any fixed model checkpoint which comes out of it. But really what you want is an interface for self-improvement that looks more like email than software engineering. You want to be able to tell it to go get better at PowerPoint, and then it figures out how to get durably better. Now, recall that Sam Altman in recent essays has said that they feel like they know how to achieve AGI, but they just need to iterate on it internally. What does he have to say about all this? Altman tweeted, We achieved gold medal level performance on the 2025 IMO competition with a general purpose reasoning system. To emphasize, this is an LLM doing math and not a specific formal math system. It is part of our main push towards general intelligence. When we first started OpenAI, this was a dream, but not one that felt very realistic to us. It is a significant marker of how far AI has come over the past decade. We're releasing GPT-5 soon, but want to set accurate expectations. This is an experimental model that incorporates new research techniques we will use in future models. We think you will love GPT-5, but we don't plan to release a model with IMO gold level of capability for many months. Basically, the model that they used in this IMO test was more advanced than GPT-5. So in this case, we have Altman shifting back to trying to tamp down expectations, which is sort of the opposite direction that he's been running recently, or at least properly make people understand that they shouldn't expect this level of performance out of the next big GPT release. Now, one additional benchmark note before we talk a little bit about GPT-5 is that last week, ARC announced a preview of ARC AGI-3. ARC's AGI-2 was already one of the hardest tests when it came to determining how capable of thinking like humans and AI is, but they call ARC AGI-3 the interactive reasoning benchmark with the widest gap between easy for humans and hard for AI. It's a game-based system. They're releasing three games or environments with a starting score of Frontier AI at 0% and humans at 100%. They write every game environment is novel, unique, and only requires core knowledge priors. No language, trivia, or specialized knowledge is needed to beat the games. Your ability to efficiently adapt to novelty defines your intelligence, not your performance on a single skill. Harder puzzles don't prove smarter AI, but rather its ability to learn new rules does. ArcPrize exists to operationalize that insight. Agents, ArcPrize points out, are now the frontier. They perceive, plan, act, remember, adapt. Static puzzles aren't equipped to grade that loop. We need interactive benchmarks that test world model building and long horizon planning under sparse feedback. And that's where ArcAGI 3 comes in. In total, it's going to be six games, three of which are live today and three of which will go live in August that are easy for humans but out of reach for today's best AI. So this is something we will look at more and dig into a little bit as companies start testing their models against this. But the point is that we're continuing to see advancements in how we even test for whatever AGI actually is. Back to GPT-5 though, however good it ends up being, the rumor mill is running rampant. Yu Chen Jin of Hyperbolic Labs writes, Heard GPT-5 is imminent from a little bird. It's not one model, but multiple models. It has a router that switches between reasoning, non-reasoning, and tool-using models. 
That's why Sam said they'd fixed model naming. Prompts will just auto-route to the next model. GPT-6 is in training. Now, although Sam tried to tamp down expectations after the International Math Olympiad gold, Ethan Mollick writes, even if GPT-5 did nothing besides switching people between 03 and 40 automatically, it would really transform most people's view of AI. Very few people, even paying users, know that they should often switch to a more capable model. And when you show them 03, they're impressed. And if you're looking for one more piece of evidence that whatever they got cooking in the OpenAI lab is serious, whether it's GPT-5, GPT-6, or further on, let's go back to the talent wars. The Wall Street Journal reports that more than 10 OpenAI researchers were offered $300 million four-year packages to make the jump to Meta, and that many have turned it down. Professional leaker Jimmy Apples commented, OpenAI staff declining $300 million packages and you don't feel the AGI? Lots and lots of intrigue to watch, but for now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.